NABO is the premier organization serving women business owners. I'm the chair for the 2017 Celebration of Excellence Awards Luncheon. And I want to thank everybody for being here today. This is a record-breaking number of attendees. I've always felt that it's critical that we put a spotlight on and support women business owners. It's inspiring uh, to see so many of you here today supporting women business ownership. I'd like to think it sends a really powerful message to the next generation of young women. You know, NABO holds a special place in my heart. You're women who are a force of power and influence. Women are exceptional business owners, leaders, volunteers. When they succeed, it strengthens our overall economy. You'll hear some amazing stories today from our honorees. If you know me at all, you know that um, I don't do no very well. Female-run startups produce 31% higher return on investment than their male counterparts. We want to make a great impact on the business community. <laughs> and women have figured out how to do more with less, how to really stretch a dollar, and how to achieve in the face of a lot of no's. Women are better together, especially when it comes to startups and small and large businesses. is the Navo Iowa Hall of Fame Legacy Award. This award was established in 2014 to honor women business owners in Iowa who demonstrate exemplary leadership. They are respected for their commitment to leadership and excellence across their business, industry, community, and volunteer service. Their contribution represents a legacy of achievement and an inspiration to others. Miriam Erickson Brown, our 2016 Nabo Iowa Hall of Fame Legacy Award inductee, will announce this year's recipient. Rowena Crosby is president of Tarot International and co-author of Your Invisible Toolbox, the technological ups and interpersonal downs of the millennial generation. She's one of the few people that I know that's actually written a book instead of just talking about it. Thousands of professionals are graduates of Tarot's workshops, which address relevant business topics. Romina's commitment to help people challenge the way that they think, combined with her very strong communication skills, ignites a passion in her listeners, which endures far beyond the length of her presentations and when they're over. Her nickname, Ro, which really suits her, began 23 years ago because another coworker shared her name. Ro has two dogs, three horses, one mule, 24 cats, no mice, and yes, she lives on a farm. <laughs> she is nuts for Golden Girl reruns and is most inspired by women leaders in our community. Ro has been active in many civic and professional organizations from leader, leading the Des Moines Rotary Club as president and to being a member of the Regional Workforce Investment Board. Currently, she serves on a lot of things, and I shortened, but she serves on the advisory council for ISU's Center for Industrial Research and Service. She is a member of the Leadership Education and Development Advisory Committee at Drake. She is a member of the advisory board for Hertz Farm Management, and she also serves on the Delta Dental of Iowa Board of Directors. Roe has been recognized by many professionals and organizations for her leadership, but most recently she's been a past recipient of the Des Moines Business Record Women of Influence Business Owner of the Year Award. When asked what one thing she wishes professional women considered more often, she said, owning our power. She is a jazz lover. She drinks coffee. She likes the color red. And the favorite place in her home is her Four Seasons room. When asked what she is most thankful for, she said that recently she dealt with the grief and the loss of the passing of her husband. And as a result, she's filled with gratitude for her family and her friends, as well as the time she had developing a wonderful relationship and marriage with her husband. And I think that speaks volumes about her warm and gracious spirit. The most important thing Roe wants to do, and I quote, 
to change the world, to wake people up to the importance of relating well with one another. Our 2017 Nabo, Iowa Hall of Fame Legacy Award winner is Rowena Crosby. Wow. Thank you, Miriam. That was such a thoughtful introduction. We enjoyed our time on the phone when she was asking me all those odd questions. <laughs> I didn't know what she was going to do with them. We were kind of imagining the passing of the Miss America crown. I think this is as, as close as you get to that. The previous honorees of this Legacy Award are inspiring to all of us. Uh, they are my role models. I am so incredibly humbled and flattered to have this award. Uh, this is an amazing event. Where's Karen? You really do know how to throw a party. Wow. <laughs> There's a lot of people to thank. Um, my sincere thanks to all of you for being here and hanging with us for this program. I want to thank Ann Block. I know she had a lot to do with all of the things that led up to this event. She's my colleague at Tarot. I want to extend my thanks to the NABO board and the selection committee who chose me for this award. Uh, but I don't have any illusions about why I'm standing up here. I know a lot of the reason that I am standing in front of you is because of a company called Tarot International that I founded 25 years ago. And if Tarot was just left up to me, it wouldn't be the company that it is today. So I have a lot of gratitude to so many clients we've had the opportunity to serve over the years and thousands of graduates from around the world. And I feel like I really am accepting this award on behalf of my team. The people who joined me on this journey and who have embraced this mission as their own. And I would like to ask, invite them to stand. There's a bunch at the tarot table here and I understand the rest are somewhere so please stand and let us say thank you. <laughs> well, I've got this platform. I have been thinking about this presentation for a very long time, and I didn't know if I should talk about tarot. Certainly I could do that, but I've chosen not to do that. I'm going to take a moment of personal privilege and talk about two topics that I think are really important. The first one is women in business, and that's why we're all here. And those of you who have been watching women in business in Iowa for a while are familiar with the American Express Open report on the status of women-owned business. And you know that for many, many years running, we ranked 51st in the country on the status of women-owned businesses. Well, you've got to add the District of Columbia in a country that only has 50 states to rank that badly. <laughs> and we held that position for a really long time. But that's changed. And I'm so proud to say it's changed. It's changed because of Governor Reynolds. It's changed because of Director Durham. It's changed because of the leadership at NABO of leaders of both genders in our business community, of so many organizations who have been making this a mission, of the members of the media and certainly the folks at business publications. And in the most recent report, we're in the middle of the pack. Yeah. And that is something to celebrate for sure. There's still a long way to go, but it's something to celebrate. So what happens when we support women-owned businesses? Well, I dug out some facts that I want to share with you. So the Kaufman Report tells us that female-run startups produce 31% higher return on investment than their male counterparts. The Angel Resource Institute has found that the investments they make in organizations with female founders perform 63% better. And of the 80 women CEOs of Fortune 1000 companies, 
between 2003 and 2015, they produced equity returns 226% higher than the S&P 500. So for those of you thinking about investing, now why is that true? Well, I th if most women business owners have probably had the same path I have, we hear no a lot. <laughs> and women have figured out how to do more with less, how to really stretch a dollar, and how to achieve in the face of a lot of no's. And this story gives us a lot of excitement that meaningful change is possible, which leads me to my second topic. Uh, that's pretty serious. Decades of sexual harassment by very powerful men in the media, in government, in Hollywood, in business, have been exploding in the headlines in recent months. This is a topic that impacts everyone, but it disproportionately impacts women. And there's even been disturbing accusations of assault and rape. And even more concerning than that is what we're learning about most of these organizations is that this was an open secret inside these companies that men and women alike weren't talking about. And the human resources departments in some of these organizations, the place you're supposed to be able to go to have your voice heard, were sanctioning the behavior and participating in cover-ups. It's, it's just absolutely horrifying. Silence does communicate, and it communicates agreement. That may not be the message we intend to send, but when we're silent, we communicate agreement. So why does this happen? Well, I suspect it happens for some of the same reasons that we see gender discrimination, why we see pay inequity, why we see difficulties in producing parental leave policies in companies, while we see difficulties in having equity around how people are hired and how people are promoted. Uh, I pulled out another stat that just is alarming to me. The World Economic Forum says that it's going to be the year 2186 before we achieve pay equity on the pace run. That's 170 years from now. <laughs> That's not just your granddaughters. We're, we're talking many generations past that. So why does this happen? Well, I think there's two reasons. One is that women do lack an equal voice. And the second is that they lack proactive men, male allies. I'm not here to bash men. We all realize that facilitating meaningful change within groups that we belong is challenging. To be able to support others in groups to which we don't belong, that's even harder. It takes a lot of courage. But it's time that all of us have got to find that courage. If you talk to men privately, and we've got a lot of men in the room, so welcome, thanks for being here. <laughs> if you talk to men privately, most of them will affirm an interest in pay equity, in creating safe workplaces for women. They all say that privately. Why not publicly? It's interesting when you're in an environment and there's a sexist comment made or a joke, a lot of times the men will look around at the women to see if they're obviously offended, if there's any signs of offense, as if they don't realize, because they do know, they know it's not okay. I'd like to encourage all of us to take action. So here's a call to action. So men and women alike, in the workplace, in the meeting, in the bar, and in the locker rooms. When you hear something that's offensive or you observe a behavior that's offensive, please say something. We don't need to make a big scene about it. We don't need to make great villains out of this. At Tarot, we like to teach people to separate the people from the behavior. It's appropriate to just say in a quiet, firm voice, that's not okay. That's not right. 
And if each of us can do that in little ways, maybe we will have a chance of changing culture. Well, that was kind of serious. Um, so I'm gonna, <laughs> I, well, let me say one more thing. Every single woman you know, every woman you know has had an experience with gender discrimination, with pay inequity, with sexual harassment, or worse. We really need to be the voice for these people. And so I am going to close with hopefully a little bit more uplifting story. It's kind of neat I'm standing beside an American flag because I'm going to talk about my path to U.S. citizenship. Many of you know I'm a native of Canada. I immigrated to the U.S. in 1990, and I applied for consideration to be a U.S. citizen in 2006. And one of the things that is most terrifying for us immigrants going through that process is the civics test. <laughs> you can go to uscis.gov and download a sample test, and you'll find out some of these amazing questions. How many voting members are there in the House of Representatives? Who did we fight in the Revolutionary War? What were the original 13 states? How many changes or amendments are there to the Constitution? Which of those amendments relate to voting rights? So a lot of intimidating questions. And it was interesting. Many people told me after I went through that process, I was probably more knowledgeable about US history than most <laughs> natural born <laughs> citizens. And judging by how some of them performed on that test, I think they were right. When we're asked to talk about what makes America great, you hear words like freedom, diversity, inclusion, equality, liberty, and justice for all. And those are true of the US, but actually those are values that are shared broadly across a number of other nations. But there is one thing that is truly only about the United States of America. As far as we know, this is the only country in history that was ever founded on a set of ideals. They're a set of aspirational ideas, ideals that hopefully someday we're all going to live up to. And may we find the courage to do that. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Rowena, and thank you for your legacy of excellence. Thank you very much.